very warm welcome to Astro Supersports continued coverage of the Copico Purple League. We are at the uh, Sports Arena Sentosa, just near uh, Pataling Jaya, just outside Kuala Lumpur. And uh, we are here for the last two matches of match day three in this fledgling league. I'm alongside Samuel Nessan, who is the team manager of uh, Kepong, whose team are involved later on today against Bangsa. But firstly, uh, we're going to be focusing on Serdang versus Petaling Jaya. Both teams have made tentative starts to the season in the fledgling league table. They're currently 8th and ninth, respectively. Games won is the deciding factor for this season. Now then, getting Samuel involved on the matches that we've got ahead today. And there's a, there's a change in order, and we've got the mixed doubles first up, Samuel. Yes. What's this all about? Uh, I think uh, the managers of uh, Kepong, uh, uh, the managers of uh, Pataling Jaya, they wanted a switch uh, to put the mixed doubles first. Uh, we're not exactly sure why they did that, but uh, it was agreed by Serdang, and hence the mixed doubles is going first. Looking ahead, uh, we're, well, we're looking at some of the, uh, the, the key uh, matchups today and, and the uh, Taiwanese guys are, are, are playing later on as we just check the, the league standings for Pataling Jaya 24 games won in their two matches Sudang 21 games won there's a maximum 18 games that you can win every game counts as a point and it's a pretty revolutionary way to, to look at uh, badminton has it worked for you as a club? Uh, so far, I mean, we would be expecting it to work, but uh, so far, not quite. We've not been performing well. We've been underperforming. We hope to pick up things later today. Okay, right. We're just about to get underway with the women's mixed doubles. JD introducing the respective teams of the Capital Purple League. Ronnie Tan Wheelong! Jagdish Singh! Chiang Jian Chiang! Vontas Indra Mawan Saniru! Lydia Chia Yu Yi! Nian Tian Min! Prajaksa Sawat! Sutkin Prabhakamo! Your assistant coach, Mohammed Hashim! Coach Yo Kevin! Assistant manager Kanta Ruban! And team manager Manoj Kumar! And now let's bring on the home side, ladies and gentlemen, scream for Serdang BC! Your captain, Tan Kian Meng! Lim Chen Ting! Lee Jian Yi! Wang Chi Lin! Chen Chung Sanatasa Saniru Tan Amelia Alicia Edsley Coach Andy Kaur On you, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen. The two teams playing in this tie: Serda BC and Vitaly Jaya BC.
So the teams are being introduced onto the court. Right, it's uh, and not a full house, as very often has been the case for the Please three o'clock uh, match, matches starting. Right. Weekends we're expecting to be a, a little bit fuller, and the seven o'clock match later on tonight will be a little bit fuller. Here are the confirmation of the team lineups, and Samuel bringing you in again. Who are you most looking forward to seeing play out of these respective lineups? Yeah, I'm looking forward to see Sutkit Prapakamol and Projector Sawan. Uh, it's a stretch pairing. I've never seen them paired before, but both of them are excellent mixed doubles. Mixed doubles players and it'll be a pleasure to watch them on TV here. So Pataling Jaya there, they're going to be starting with the mixed doubles. As we say, there's a slight change in the routine. Normally it's the men's singles to get us underway. But for various reasons, we've got the mixed doubles going. Right, let's head down courtside. JD is talking to the respective team managers of Sodang and Pataling Jaya. All right, we're here courtside with the team managers and uh, just to try to figure out who to interview first, we have Ong Yu Hong, team manager of Sodang BC. Your game's average right now, not exactly the best. It's negative seven. Uh, you need to uh, at least get it back to positive. So where will the wins come today in the six matches? Where do you see the wins coming from? Uh, I think the following a few matches that we're going to, to win because uh, in the first few matches that we play against the top or quite strong team. So the following thing that we think that we can uh, pass by there. Yeah. Now the big question also today is there's a brother and sister playing together. You have the sister, they have the brother. Have they been uh, talking to each other? Any secrets that they've been letting out? Um, uh, I do not know <laughs> whether they talk behind or not. But we as make sure that we going to uh, give our best. Okay, yeah. Good. Thank you so much, Ong Yu Hong, team manager of Serdang BC. Now over to Manoj Kumar, who is team manager of uh, Battalion Jaya BC. Now here's the thing: you guys are in fifth, according to this 24 and 19 games. Uh, but the top place has. 49, 50 games to one. What's been going on behind the scenes for you guys? Where, where are you guys having all the improvements coming from? Actually, today uh, we did a best lineup. I brought a secret weapon, my mixed double right. from Thailand. He's like top 10 in the world. So I, hopefully we can deliver a good point, maybe 3-0. And we are going all up. So hopefully we can you know, get more points and we go top three, you know, can up to the level. Right. Yeah. Now let's talk about a sibling rivalry as well. What happens here? If yours wins and they lose, are you going to cause a rift in the whole family set, uh, set up over there? No, 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 no. Don't worry. We won't give any problem. But after that, we have a dinner together. Family dinner. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very well done. Team managers, shake hands one more time to your seats. Let's get the matches going. Back to you in the commentary box. Thanks, JD. Yeah, sibling rivalry it is indeed. And uh, the manager's giving us an interesting perspective on the secret weapons, and it's a match that you're looking out for. Yes. Scratch, um, scratch partnerships difficult to, to actually work. Um, sometimes they do work, and when they work, they can be quite deadly, and I think in this case it will work because uh, both uh, Sutket Prapakamol and Projecta are exclusively mixed doubles players, so it might work. So Pataling Jaya hoping to get off to a winning start. As we mentioned in the league table, how it works is games won is decides who is top. Moa City have got 50 games won so far in their three matches played. They've dropped just four matches. It's a phenomenal start That's and right. a phenomenal pace from Moa City and Puchong. It's a threat to the rest of the teams. Uh, the rest of the teams are feeling the pressure. They have already set the pace and we have to follow now. It's an 11 game season, so there's still plenty of time, but here's Sudket and Projakta. The uh, Pataling Jaya mixed doubles secret weapon, as we're calling it. And as for Serdang, in their multicolored shirts, they've got Tan Yipjan and Amelia Anseli. And Amelia's been a regular throughout this season, but That's right. all our focus, I think, is on Pataling Jaya for this That's game. Right. That's right, but uh, even with that said, uh, Des, I think we have to pay attention to Tan Yipjan. He's been out of the national squad since June this year and uh, but he's still been training hard he we expected a win against them when uh, Kapong played Serdang last Sunday but you know it didn't happen Tanya Jun is still very much on form and I think we can expect something big from him today 
Just looking back at the respective scores for these teams so far this season. This is the third match in the Purple League for them. And for Sadang, it's been a 15-10 defeat against Puchong United, followed by a 13-11 reverse against Kepong. That's right. And so they've been close ties. They've been there. So what's the what's the missing ingredient for them? Uh, for, for, for Sadang. For Sadang, I think uh, the players, they, they are not able to, uh, they don't really have the players' quality that uh, the other top team seems to be having at the moment so in terms of players they're losing out like for example today we have Sudkit here and they have Tanya June there so in terms of players they're losing out this is Sudkit Praka the uh, Thai world number ranked eight 34 years of age now so he'll bring experience as well That's but right. Experience over pace, uh, is, is experience such a big thing, in particularly in doubles yes, and mixed I, doubles? I think in particular in mixed doubles because a lot of it has to do with the placement. Uh, mixed doubles is perhaps one of the most uh, tactical game in badminton. Uh, men's doubles more of power, men's singles more of movement and so forth. But mixed doubles, you really need to place the shuttle, try to get your work, your the female in the other court to actually play most of the shot. I think Prapakamal has the edge here. We just uh, seen Tanya John who you were mentioning. And Amelia Anseli, 26 years of age now, and the, 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 the woman in the mixed doubles, they've got an important role to play at the that's net. Right, that's right, they have to actually keep the shuttle low, force the opponent to lift the shuttle, and uh, you know, get the, in, in that way get the men involved to kill it off. Chair umpire for this match will be Ian Spear. And Mohamed Izad Salman is the service judge, and uh, they've ruled with a rod of iron so far, the, the chair umpires. The, there, there's no messing around with them. You, their word is law. Yes, uh, and it's, I think it's been stricted in the regular Super Series and all that. We, we haven't seen so much fouls in the Super Series and even in the Grand Prix goals. I think there's been a lot of fouls, especially with the service here. Are you in favour of that? Uh, I mean, the, the clubs have been given fair warning that that's how they're going yes. to umpire. Yes, but I think it's been a bit, in my opinion, I think it's been a bit too strict, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got... Uh, a season break coming up after the weekend. We will have played four match days, and then we're back in the new year, January the 2nd, for match day 5 of 11. So we'll um, no doubt tweak one or two little things, and no doubt the team managers will have a word or two with the umpires as well. Certainly we would. <laughs> On the bench, though, the respective coaches and managers trying to inspire their team. This is Sudang at the near end, Petaling Jaya at the far end. Petaling Jaya represented by Sudket and Praz Prazakta. And the serve will go to, I think it's Sudang will start with Amelia. First match of six. Remember, it's games one that will decide the overall victor, not matches one. And we're level in match one of the time. Good early interchange, the smash dividing the, the opposite partners. Right, and it's interesting, before that, uh, Projector Sawan set the rally so well, set it up for her partner, and yes, he killed it off. Yet again. The smash, if he can get the, the glory shot, he'll take it every time. Early two love lead. Three left. I think we are seeing a bit of dominance from Projecta Sawan in the front of the net. Projecta into the net on that occasion. It's a first error. Three. Wide. Is this a nervous start for Amelia, or is she just under so much pressure? I think that she's playing an opponent that is uh, exclusively mixed doubles. Amelia is actually a women's doubles player, and I think that uh, she's going to struggle with someone who specializes in the mixed doubles discipline. And she just picked up a serve there. She's picked up two, projector twice into the top of the net. Four. That's 
three times into the top of the net now. She's dominating but making errors. She's, she's actually has the right ideas, but I think it's early in the game. She hasn't settled down. She's uh, just missing out on the execution. I think uh, coach is saying exactly that. Just settle it down a wee bit. And very eager. Well, she started really well, but something's going wrong. Yeah, especially with the lighting and this new court system, this court uh, environment, I think it's a bit difficult. The players take a slightly longer to settle down. And I think that's what's happening here. Exactly, six, with projector. Four. A 4-2 lead is now a 4-6 deficit. and that will make uh, PJ feel just a little bit better. PJ at the far end of the court, Sudang at the near end. Oh. Great disguise and then great smash. Yeah, that, that, that is typical mixed doubles playing from Sudket Rapakabal. He really knows what he's doing. Teasing the space and Sudkar, quick though he is, couldn't get over there. Six. Yeah. Six. Amelia knocks it long. She created her own luck there, Prajakta Sawan, taking it early and forcing the net. Six. That's a fifth error into the net. She, she would have to cut that down, especially in the 11-point system where the game can finish so fast. I think she really has to work on that. Oh. Find the wide open spaces of the court. The Sports Arena Sentosa. Now we're at the business end. As you say, it's first to 11, best of five sets. That means there's no margin for error. Guys, where did that come from? Great defensive play from Sudkid. Again, he managed to counter counter the attack and going into the attack from defense, and he was really successful at that time. Sudkid on serve. Darling Jaya is making a lot of mistakes, but I think they are trying, attempting all the right tactics you know, to just put pressure on the opponents, take the shot fast, and I think sometimes that is causing a little bit of error, but I think that's the right way to play. 9 all, first to 11. Long from Sudket, game point to... Amelia and Yip Jin. Oh. No, getting into the thing. I'm just too anxious to finish it off. A look of horror from his coach. It's always, and it's always difficult playing against play. someone like Sudkit. You just want to finish it off. So it's deciding point. Still game point. This can literally go either way. The smash wins it from Sudket. PJ have the lead. Experience won it there again. I think that there was a calm play from Sudket. He just didn't simply, he didn't, he didn't go hastily into the attack. He just placed it in the right place. I think that was quite deadly there to finish it off. Well, it was nip and tuck, but Amelia and Yip Jun unable to really capitalize on a, a set point opportunity. So it's the PJ pairing 
who get themselves well look at the Sudan pairing here and what can you say to your team once they've lost a, a signal like that because they have the chances to win that first game what do you say to, to your players once, once they've just had this kind of reverse if they were to lose again you know they had to really pick themselves up mentally because I think the, the psychological damage is far worse than uh, you know what the physical damage they are going through you know the physical lethargy and all that I think psychologically they're really down it's going to be hard to pick them up so Sudan losing that first game Samuel Nessan the coach sorry the team manager apologies of Kepong who are involved later is in the analyst chair today a little bit confusing with both teams wearing predominantly blue Sudan far end of the court trail by one game to love uh, a sixth error from the racket of Pajaka. Good judgment. I'm seeing the pair from Serdang actually pushing Projecta very often to the back of the court and I think that's what's working for them. They're trying to keep Sidke to the front, move Projecta behind. So far it's been working very well. Case in point there. Projecta was alongside her Thai partner. I suspect this will be a, a really competitive contest. There's there's no standout. You look down the six matches, there's no standout um, play, reason for, to think one team will pull away from the others. Yeah, I think if, if at all there is one standout, it'll be immense doubles later, the fourth match with the Taiwanese pair, but apart from that, it's all evenly matched. Oh, into the open space. Once you commit to the smash, Smash was a little bit too flat and uh, Sutke took advantage of that and just pushed, drive it away. Yeah. Ooh, bit of fortune. And again, it, it just goes down to the way Prajakta is taking her racket high and uh, she's just putting so much pressure from the top. So, in a sense, she's creating her own luck there. Oh, that's a, a nice little gimme for Yip Jen. Three, four. Not really had a chance to focus on Yip Jun. We'll keep an eye on him. Yeah. Again, the disguise from Suket. The variation of pace there. He smashes two hard ones and then he puts one soft one in. It just upsets the momentum of the opponent. His racket head speed coming into the contact is still very, it, it's very quick, but it just slows at the last second. It's a very fine slice. It takes a lot of experience to do that, especially under pressure of playing in the team event. Finding the vacant space, that one's in. 7-3 lead to Pajaka and Sudket of PJ, who lead one game to love, 7-3. We're seeing a lot of those double shots from Sutkit. Seems content to just play the soft shot first before going for the kill. Well, the soft shot sets up the hard smash. Especially when you're playing someone as uh, not quite as experienced as Sutkit as Yip Jun is. Seems to work because Yip Jun is really under a lot of pressure playing against a big name like Sutkit. That's good pace from Amelia to tough for Sutkit. And they needed that one, did Sudang? at a bad time. Oh. So get made a remarkable get there, but couldn't get the point. Yeah, I think they're focusing all the attacks, you now they're channeling all the attacks to project us our one. They realize that that's the weak spot, that's the way to the entrance to get into the, the defense. 
yet again. Six, nine. Okay. Two consecutive points for Sedang. They, they need another couple to really give themselves a chance in this uh, second game. And again, that little drop smash, if that's what you can call it, gives the game point to PJ. Oh, it's dropped in, and the game goes to PJ, 11 points to six. I think it's a little bit unfortunate because Yip Jun, I think, is playing all the right shots, he's doing all the right things, it's just that Sutkin is just one step ahead of him in everything he does, so it's really, un really unfortunate of him. I mean, in the build-up, you were talking about the experience, and oh, <laughs> that's, is that just him not judging it with the lights, and as you say, this new arena causing one or two problems for him? Yeah, that's right, so I think the lighting has a lot to do with it as well. It's quite bright, especially with the right time. Television demands, I'm sorry, Samuel, television demands. <laughs> but it's an excellent start for Fataling Jaya. Their season results so far. They started off the season with a 12-9 victory over Pataling and then beat Cheras, 12 points to 10. So they've got wins under their, bag, uh, under their belt, but not many games, just 24 games won in, uh, in, in the two matches. Yeah, I think they're doing just enough to win it. They're doing just enough to win it. And especially when you're playing a team like Serdang, I think the tactical awareness of the team, especially with a coach like Yu Hock, I think that's going to come into play again. We are at the Sports Arena Sentosa in Pataling Jaya. It's the Copico Purple League, match day three. This is the final two matches taking place today of match day three. A full round of matches on Saturday and Sunday as well. This is Sudang at the near court against Pataling Jaya in the first of the mixed doubles. Game three, level. What an angle. Maybe I don't think Projecta expected that. Yipchan was pushed deep into his backhand. We see little glimpses of Yipchan. He's clearly a talented player. 23 years of age, there's, there's more of, of, of this fellow, isn't there? He's, there's more to him, but I think the last tournament he played was in April uh, this year, and uh, that's been the last he's played the international tournaments. He was out of the national team after that. And at the moment, he's on the receiving end. As the experienced tie, Suket smashing his team into a 2-1 lead. Good judgment. Well, not such judgment. How are the players reacting to the 11-point format? Uh, I think generally the uh, younger players actually uh, more favorable of the scoring system uh, than actually the more favored ones. Seems to be working for them. Certainly it's high intensity. You can't afford to have a run of four or five points go against you, otherwise the set is virtually gone. That's right. And I think it puts a lot of pressure on the senior players as well, especially if you've lost a set to a junior player. That's the point, huh? That's <laughs> Nice. Delicate hands from Amelia Anthony. She does take the, uh, the shuttle cock early, doesn't she? Yes, and uh, that's typical of a mixed doubles player. They really take the shots really early. They try to put a lot of pressure, as much pressure as they can on the opponent. His time at the Copico Purple League, Suket. It's another smash winner. That's his sixth of the game. He's, he's keeping to his typical rhythm. First the soft shot, then the hard shot. Just playing to that, and it seems to be working again and again. Yeah, 
They're focusing all of the attack on Projecta Sawan. But yet again, it works this time. Well, it works, and they're leading 6-4 in this, the third game. Best of five. I think a lot of it has to do with what Emilia has been doing in front of the court. She's really stepped up to the challenge. She's really putting a lot of pressure on Projecta now. And opening up a lot of room for Yip Jun to actually get in there and put the attacking shots in. Right, business end into the second half of this game. Amelia Anseli. Good interchange at the net and Amelia heavens to the looks up to the skies Emilia did everything right there except the last shot just missed it sadly that's the important one yes <laughs> soft shot again Soft shot. Great badminton. Just works again and again. The soft shot coming in because I think Yip Jun is just getting nervous when he sees Sukkit jumping so high. He tends to put a defensive stance right behind and then the drop really works. The lift into Sukkit. Made the, the error come from Sudang and certainly that 6 4 lead that they had and a glimpse of taking this third game has disappeared for Sudang and we're back to 6 all. Serdang will really have to pick themselves up psychologically again. They had a lead, they squandered it. Much of it credit to Sudket. They're targeting Prajaka, but they've lost three points on the spin. A lot of desperation going into the last shot there. It's really desperate to get the shuttle down. Samuel Nesson, team manager of uh, Kajang, is the, sorry, Kepong, my apologies, is the <laughs> analyst today. Can't get my case sorted out. Apologies, Samuel. No problem. <laughs> That's important. It means just three points away from victory for the team from PJ. And real pressure on Amelia. And Yip Jun. Again, they're doing everything right to move Projecta right behind. It's the finishing that's all important. That's a nice little finish for Projecta. Yeah, I think they did everything right, as I said earlier. They just moved Projecta behind. It's just the finishing. They just couldn't finish the rally. That comes with experience. Exactly. I think, and I think a lot of it, as I said earlier, has to do with Sudkit's experience. He's covering up a lot for Projecta there. Straight to Projecta. That's one of those where you just can't get your body in the right position. Just hesitating whether to take that or to get out of the way. She's warmed up before. That's not good for hamstrings. Ooh, a great shot by Emilia. Takes a lot of courage to put pressure on someone like Projecta in front. And they've won back-to-back -back points. It's looking pretty grim at 6-9, 8-9. Different story. Service with Sudang. Good smash, Yip Jin. Great effort they're putting, getting back into this game, but just one wonders whether it's just a little, too little, too late. Well, in this game, it's three straight points and they retain serve. Time Yip Jin. This is a crucial point. Oh, it's
Ladies' wife. <laughs> but she had a flutter in her heart. Match point. Millimeters. It was close. Match point for DJ. And a three love lead. They've got it. They've taken it. 11 10, 11 6, 11 9. And just about deserved it. Uh, I think it's a well deserved victory for uh, Sutkit and Projector Sawan. They were a the better pair, more experienced. I think that's, that's what it took end of the day for a 3 0 victory. Certainly Sudan can take some heart out of this because that, uh, you, you said before the match that Sukhev would probably lead them to victory, but a 10 and a 9, that, that's, a, that's a good competitive game. I think a lot of it has to do with the first game, the 10, 11-10 uh, defeat in the first game. I think a lot of it has to do with that. And we see in the subsequent games, uh, Gib Jun in particular took a lot uh, struggle to pull himself back up again. 22 minutes of game time. And now we're just going to head down courtside where the reluctant interviewees, the victors Sudket and Projector, will be talking to our MC and reporter Jason Desmond. All right, we're down here on the tournament arena floor with the winners. Mixed doubles to start things off. Sudket and Projector, what was the strategy? Because I had a chat with your manager and your coach. Is it win big and win fast? What, what's going on? Uh, we have to win fast, actually, because uh, starting was with first mixed doubles, and I had should get with me, so I was a little confident to play. So he played really well. So now the thing is, this is really your first match in the Copico Purple League. First match, are you happy with your performance? Yes, I think I've, because uh, I, my coach uh, give me the more prepare for the the normal tournament because that's the the normal tournament is a uh, 21 point. That's it. The Purple League is uh, in win point. Must be do the faster. Yeah. But it takes some time to get used to it. Looks like you did. 3-0 winners for Tulling Jaya BC. Thanks, guys. Back to you in the iBook Court commentary box. Thanks, JD. Wow. As we just have a look at some of the match highlights here. Sudan in the multicolored sleeves. They put up a good fight, but all the while, Amelia Anseli was, was under pressure. But their game plan seemed to be really to put pressure on Projector. On uh, for, for PJ. Yeah, and I think it would have worked uh, had, had uh, Sudkit not been there, but I think Sudkit was the one that made all the difference ultimately. Just experience at the end. Sudkit, the 34 year old Thai who just in the interview afterwards said he was warned by his coach that first to 11, it's a much, much faster game and you, you, you've got no time to just build yourself into the game. Yes, I was really impressed with the way that Sudkit came, especially in Tel all the shots that he played, the choice of shots, uh, really uh, was a testament to his experience, really. There is Sudket, happily enjoying the victory. As we just look at, at the close work together of Sudket, looking after, that's how you said, he was kind of babysitting uh, Projector. Yes, that's right, that's right. And we see there how he is just moving, moving Yip Jun away and away and putting so much pressure on him. And yeah, the fl that was just far too flat. He took advantage of that. So the experience, because he was in the right place, saw the open court and applause for him as we look at some of the statistics for Sudket and Projector. In terms of uh, the short serves, they almost exclusively short ser uh, serves. Six smash winners, 16 unforced errors though from Sudang. That was probably influential as well in the final score. Yes, yes, and I think a lot of those unforced errors uh, were in a sense due to the pressure of actually playing with someone as reputable as uh, Sudket. So unforced errors forced in a, a strange kind of a way. Yes. Okay, second match coming up is actually going to be the men's singles. Tan Jiawei versus Tianmin, the Vietnamese. Okay, team players have been introduced. We'll stay courtside. JD is talking to the respective coaches just to get their analysis ahead of this men's singles match as to why the selections were made. Okay, we're down here with the manager before this match uh, with Uhawk, manager of Sudan BC. Jawi's last match was doubles with Derek. 
So why have you put him into uh, this uh, singles match? Is it a strategic move? What is it about this match? Yeah. Yeah, I think we should, uh, in my team strategy, that we have to promote our youngster. That's why I put in our 16 years old boy to play against the, the top player, like, you know, from Vietnam or from uh, overseas. That's why we put in our, our juniors. So it's all about exposure, which is great. That's all what, that's what the Kofi Ko Purple League is about. But Manoj, let's talk about uh, Tian Min. You've been sticking with him as the first singles all the way. How would you rate his performance so far? Yeah, he, he committed with our singles match, so he wants to play most of the game. Even though he had a tough match with uh, Hafiz Hashim, with uh, Chiras, but he still do the best. So I'm sure he's going to give the best and he's just committed to the Purple League. I think he liked Purple League. That's why he, after the Asiata Cup, he's just like, he just want to come and play the Purple League. Thank you so much. Who doesn't like the Purple League? Back to you in the commentary box. We love the Purple League, JD. That's what we do. Joining me uh, in the commentary box. It's an interesting analysis there. You've got experience versus a kid. Right. And I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, which uh, uh didn't quite mention, a lot of his players are currently in the Bangladesh satellite, Song Juwon, uh, and uh, even So Wei, uh, so Wei Yik. Uh, yeah, he has, I think, about three or four players of his top singles players in Bangladesh at the moment. And I think that has a lot to do with why Tan Jiawe is actually selected to play here. Well, here is Jiawe, world ranking 1,258. It would be an astonishing achievement if he were to even take a game off the Vietnamese world number 20. But this is a great experience, a great opportunity uh, for, for the youngster, Jia uh, uh, Wei. Yeah, I think, yeah, as, 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 as Ong Yu Hock said, it's exposure. But uh, there, just, just a quick note on uh, Nguyen Tien Min. He actually lost the previous game to Muhammad Hafiz Hashim. I'm sure he'll be out here to make amends. Indeed. Yeah, he's won one. He's lost one. And on my left, Sedang BC represented by Tan Jia Wei. Jia Wei will be serving. Patel and Jaya lead three love from the first match. That's a, a nice little start for him, a confidence booster. He'll be, he'll be looking for a lot of those to actually get back into a comfortable lead. And at the moment, it seems that Jia Wei is actually helping him. Little fist pump from Jawe. What an opportunity for a 16-year-old to play up against a world-ranked player. Yes, yeah, so this would not happen in any other tournaments except the Kobiko Purple League, where the opportunity is given. and being moved all over the court with the teenager. Yes, I think oh. Nguyen Tien Min is a bit careful not to go for the quick kill. He just wants to get himself warmed up. He just wants to get the feel of the court first. Long. And regular coaching for the teenager. What would be a realistic expectation? Big five, five points from a game or from a couple of games? Is, is that the realistic expectation for Jia Wei? Uh, I think that uh, what his coach will be looking for is for him to actually be able to be stay in the rallies with Gwen. Not so much about the points, but to be able to stay in the rally. Five, four, uh, which at the moment he's, he doesn't seem to be doing. There's a lot of quick errors. Uh, I don't think his coach will be happy with him. Just talking about six, one. A lot of it has to do with nerves. Four straight points. Make that three. That's a nice confidence boosting so, so smash. So, uh, yes, you need a lot more of those against Wen Ken Min. But that's a good start. A nervous so, look so, over to his coaching staff. Seven, two. Yeah. Just 
too many of those errors. When Tianmin is not really going for the kill, he's not attacking, he's just playing his opponent, allowing his opponents to give the mistakes. This is good. Well, Tianmen finishes after a long rally, but that's what you were talking about. Yes, exactly. To just stay in the rally with him, that would be something, a confidence booster. Tianmen trying to become a popular Vietnamese in Malaysia this weekend. That would be a rarity. Yeah. I think he's very popular among the players already. He is a character. Leads 9-2. Long, good judgment from Jan Ye. There's a sympathy for Jan Wei immediately, yes. even in the commentary box here. You want him to do well. Exactly. <laughs> and he's picked up four points. Four, nine. He really has, just has to stay in the rally with Gwen, look out for opportunities and take them. His opponent at the net. That's a great shot. taken that first game 11 points to four but you saw some real improvement in the latter stages of that first game staying in the points staying in the in the rallies yes i think it's it's so crucial for jawe to actually just stay there not get uh, carried away and not get uh, desperate trying to finish up when and i think when in particular is not really going for the attacking shot as he always does he's an attacking player but i think he's holding himself back and just rallying playing the rally game hawk giving Plenty of explanations to his player from Serdang. He's very hands-on, is Yu Hock. Uh, some, some coaches and managers are, some aren't. Yeah, I think Yu Hock is one of those very, wo very vocal managers. You see him shouting from the side of the court. But it's PJ who have the lead. They took the first match three games to love. They've taken the first game here, so they have a 4-0 overall lead in terms of the overall standings for PJ. If they can pick up 14, 15 or 16 points, it will rocket them up into the top four in the standings. Games won is the deciding factor in this Copico Purple League. It's not about matches won, it's all about games won. Second game, level play. Just out. Uh, there's a change of tactics now with Wen Tianmin. He's really going for the attack now. Well, it's not a charity case, is it? Yes. <laughs> Shot, sir. Uh, all the pace off the shuttle. No, it's long. Uh, it's been called wide. Three, but he saw the opening. He has to jump at those. Especially in the second game, Gwen is putting so much pressure on him. Unforced errors. He saw Jamway yeah. there. 
11 unforced errors. And he trails love for difficult match for him. Oh, oh that is confidence. Oh, <laughs> that's a response. <laughs> Completely wrong footing, Tianmen. I'd keep using that shuttle if I was you, fella. Terrific. Bit of an exhibition mode Two, there, Nguyen. Four. Really have to get back his focus into this game and not underestimate his opponent. That's a good point. There were opportunities to kill and it was almost like he was teasing, playing, yes. with, his, playing with his prey. Yes. And of course, there are number 13 from the racket of the youngster. Two. Got a 16-year-old up there. Tian Jiawei up against a very experienced world number 20, Nyun Tianmin. The errors keep coming. Six, two. Shot. Smash winner number two only from the racket of Tianmen. As I was saying earlier, he doesn't need those smash winners. Just Jawe has been making all the errors for him. And you can only beat the opponent put up in front of you. And if uh, Jawe is there for experience, uh, Jawe, sorry, is there for experience, he's Certainly learning the hard way. He's been given a lesson here by the Nine, world of it. Eight. Literally on his knees. Please. Now, a match like this can be good for a youngster, or it could smash his confidence. Yeah, it just depends. It, it, it differs from case to case, and in Jawi's case, he's a fast learner. I'm sure he will take all the experience he gets from here and put it into his game. Thank you. Tropical Purple League is designed, one of the stated ambitions is to become a middle ground between world junior champions and the very, very Good. top level. Good. And you're going to get the likes of a 16-year-old up against the world Great. number 20. And to what lessons can be absorbed in the three-month season? Just long. Ten. Game point two. Game point for Tianmen. And a bit of showboating, but that's clinical finishing. Yes, and uh, not so much, nothing much to, to discuss in the, in the se second game. I think Nguyen just was just on top of his opponent, just put all the pressure. And I think it was end of the day was just an easy win for him. So PJ leading two sets to love, just 11 minutes of court time, 11-4, 11-2 for Tianmen. And Again, on Q Hock is continuing the lessons. And really animated there. Do come along if you're in this part of town. There are seats available. I think it'll be a little bit fuller tonight. The matches in midweek kick off uh, as kick off start at 3 o'clock and at 7 p.m. At the weekends, the action starts at 10 in the morning, 2 and 6. We are on Astro Super Sports 2 for the second and third games during the weekend. But do come down here, it's a unique experience, and it's a very, very atmospheric venue. It is, it is intimidating for the players as well, with the crowd so close to them. It's not something you'd get in any other stadium. Surang, trailing five games to love overall in the tie, two games to love in this particular match. I think Jawi really has to shrug off the nerves, put it that way. Is it nerves? 
uh, I think it's it's a bit of nerves and it's a bit Dali. of intimidation of playing Lalo. someone in the top ten in the world. Play. Good. It's a really good rally from Tanjawe. You said in the first game, just keeping in the rallies, learning about the court craft, yes. getting yourself around in the right position. Yes. Creating opportunities for himself, and he did that just there. He's got himself a two love lead. Two. Too, too many errors from Tian Min, but that's. Um, his sixth and fourth error. I think Tianmin, the exhibition shot to pay, pay the price for that. Very strong. You get that little teasing shot wrong and you're in big trouble. That's right. Damages your confidence as well. Positively in this third game. Smash winners. Jump in five of them. Samuel Nissan is the coach, uh, coach manager of Kajang who's <laughs> providing analysis. I, I keep keep it's putting you in the coach's chair. It's, it's kapong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too many K's, I'm sorry. <laughs> Two, three. Shot. Smash winner number six. Yeah, that, that was a great placement to the smash. Nguyen was just not going for power, he went for placement as well and it paid off. I do see a shift in, in terms of confidence. Jiawei is gaining confidence by the point. Thank you. Big screens in the arena. All the girls know that they're, when they're being televised, shy little grin. It all adds to the atmosphere, very much including the crowd in this uh, Copico Purple League. Good judgment. That's a great smash. That's all we did it. The racket's head was poised to play it and then drawn at the last millisecond. I think that, that comes with the last stiffness. Completely of Nguyen's attacks and all that. Now he's daring, he's taking those shots back, he's retrieving them. 